I'm really pleased to be introducing this session on fusion energy, uh, not least because I'm the chairman of the UK's Atomic Energy Authority, uh, which is located just down the road from us here in Oxford. Uh, some of you, I hope, will have been there before and will be very excited to, to have this update on what's happening. First of all, uh, as we all know, the world is at a crisis point in terms of its use of fossil fuels. And just to calibrate that, let me give you a, a thought experiment. We know that to, to remove carbon from today's energy mix, we need to get rid of something like 11,000 megatons uh, of carbon. Um, and that's uh, if, if we assume that renewables will take up all new demand between now and 2050, if we're going to hit net zero. What does 11,000 megatons look like? Well, we've got 11,000 days roughly between now and 2050. And if we opened one new nuclear power plant every day for 11,000 days, we just about get there. Well, if you don't like nuclear power, uh, we could open the largest wind farm in the world every day for 11,000 days. So I hope that's somewhat sobering for you in terms of giving you the enormity of the task at hand. What you're going to hear about today is almost what happens after that. I mean, we, we're all focused on this huge problem of uh, reducing carbon in the atmosphere. But in doing so, we're going to have to electrify far more parts of society and industry and the things that we do. And that's going to put huge demand uh, for electricity power production. So uh, we need a strategy beyond 2050. And fusion energy is one of those key parts that can provide us almost unlimited energy into the future, perhaps for millions of years, without creating pollution that destroys the environment. And what we're going to show you today is how here in Oxfordshire, we create the sun on earth. And it's a fabulous story. It's a story that connects our academics um, in MPLS uh, with wonderful scientists and some audacious machines that you're going to have a look at at Cullum, just down the road from Oxford. Welcome to Master Upgrades. This is a spherical tokamak and is one of the fusion experiments that we have here on site. The machine itself is just over there. Let's go and take a look. MAST stands for the Mega Ampere Spherical Tokamak and the U stands for Upgrade. MAST Upgrade is a plasma confinement device. It confines high temperature plasma with magnetic fields to stop that plasma from hitting the walls. Plasma is an ionised gas. So if you take a solid and you heat it up, you get a liquid. If you take a liquid and heat it up, you get a gas. And then a gas, if you heat it up even more, you get a plasma where you start to take the electrons out of the atom. Deuterium gas is put into the tokamak, we heat it up, it strips the electrons off those neutral atoms and you're left with just the positive nuclei and the negative electrons. The major reaction that goes on here is a deuterium and a high energy deuterium fused together and you get helium and a neutron. We do get a few fusion events going on inside of the machine, but that's incidental more than anything. This is really designed to explore how the plasma behaves in the conditions that are required for fusion. At the core of the plasma, the temperatures are around about 20 million degrees or so. The wall itself will melt at a few hundred degrees. The tiles will start to fail if you get above about 1500 degrees, maybe 2000 degrees. So Mast Upgrade features a particularly novel diverter known as a Super X diverter, which is designed to cool the plasma down as effectively as possible before it hits the walls. So you essentially have this really long leg of diverted plasma and so that promotes enhanced radiative cooling. This is really important for future fusion devices that can be run for long periods of time. Because this is an experiment, diagnostics are a really important feature of the machine. My work is looking at turbulence within the core of the plasma itself. Turbulence in the plasma is these random fluctuations. So rather than a nice smooth flow or a nice uh, sort of smooth density, we have these random fluctuations. Looking in there allows us to try and characterise this turbulence. 
The camera that I use has got a 8x8 pixel sensor on the front and can operate at incredibly high frame rates, up to 4 million frames per second. We can't put the camera inside the tokamak itself, and so instead we use a series of mirrors in order to direct the view of our camera at the part of the plasma that we want to look at. Before we knew about turbulence, we were very, very confident that fusion could be done on a machine about this big. It's like, yeah, over that much space, it would take maybe a second for the energy to get out of that, and that was long enough for you to get your fusion. We built those devices, they didn't work. So understanding how that happens is going to be really important to keeping future devices high enough performance that we get the fusion power that we need. This machine was never designed to generate a significant amount of fusion power. We have another machine here on site, just over there, which does do that job. JET is the largest magnetically confined fusion device in the world. JET stands for the Joint European Taurus. It is a tokamak that is operated by UK AEA on behalf of Eurofusion. We're taking two nuclei of heavy hydrogen, deuterium and tritium, and we're heating them up so they can get close enough together that they actually combine to make one helium nucleus. And that produces loads of fusion energy that is then taken off by a very small particle called a neutron. JET's whole job is to tell us more about how to build a fusion power plant. As part of my job, I get to actually go in and operate on JET. I have some cool selfies of me stood on top of the machine. JET has recently broken the world record and its own record for the most energy produced in a sustained fusion pulse. Three, two, one, zero. JET was able to run for five seconds, which is quite similar to what it did before, except it produced much more energy. It produced 59 megajoules, which is extremely exciting, especially because in fusion, five seconds of sustained fusion is a really, really long time. In the center of the sun, it's 15 million degrees centigrade. Inside JET, when we run our experiments, it's 150 million degrees centigrade, 10 times hotter than the center of the sun which makes it the hottest thing in the solar system when it's running. And that's one of the reasons JET is so important because not many machines around the world have the knowledge of how to deal with the deuterium tritium experiment. It's super fun. The diagnostics on JET are really important to tell us what's actually happening inside the machine. And it can tell us important things like when parts need replacing, when things need fixing. And at that point, we send in our remote manipulators to go in and fix and change things as they need to. Right now, we're standing in the IVTF, the in-vessel training facility. It's used to train our operators on the remote handling equipment so that they will know exactly what to face when they come into doing operations inside the jet top map for real. What's in here is a complete replica of exactly what you'll see actually inside the vessel. Here and here you can see actual ports. In real life in the tokamak they'll have diagnostics running through them or booms running through them. What we have here is what we call mascot. Uh, and that's an acronym for an Italian word, actually, which basically stands for Servo Controlled Manipulator. The remote handling team is a big team at UK AEA, and Mascot is controlled by a team of operators that works in a completely different building, and they basically have a pair of arms that look just like Mascot's arms. And when you move one of these arms, Mascot moves its arm too. If it hits a wall, you have feedback coming through the operator's side, so you've got haptic feedback there. But it's so accurate that we can pick up a 10 kilogram weight and actually feel 10 kilograms through the side of the operator. Which is a very weird feeling, especially when you look down and there's nothing in your hands. Fusion energy is a safe, efficient, carbon-free while it's happening, an energy source that we think could baseload the energy grid in the future.
So all the remote handling capabilities and technologies and manipulators that we have developed here in JET over its lifetime is part of a department called RACE. But they've got lots of other interesting, innovative projects going on. Welcome to RACE. RACE stands for Remote Applications in Challenging Environments. Here we're developing robotic solutions for handling some of the key challenges introduced by fusion technology. Let's go take a look inside. We're now here in the race work hall, and behind me is the IRTFM, and this stands for the ETA Robotics Test Facility Manipulator. Using this manipulator, we can demonstrate a number of key robotic maintenance tasks that are required for ETA. Similar to the mascot manipulator, this manipulator uses haptic feedback to allow the operator to feel what the robot's feeling. So this manipulator here helps us develop operations for ETA, and I'm gonna take you to a different manipulator which helps us develop operations for demo. Behind me here is TARM, and we're using the TARM here to demonstrate the APCS project. APCS stands for Active Positional Control System. One of the key challenges for the maintenance of the demo experiment is the handling of the demo blankets. These are 10 meter plus sized banana shaped structures that need to be removed safely from the demo environment without touching surrounding components. So the actual robot that will be used in demo is much smaller than TARM here. However, we're using the TARM as a test bed to develop control algorithms and strategies to demonstrate that we can control flexible loads precisely. Firstly, you have the sheer scale and size and weight of the components. Secondly, there's flexibility in the component in itself as well as the robot handling it. Thirdly, there's fluid that may be locked inside of the component which would add an unknown disturbance and would increase uncertainty. All of these challenges must be overcome and that's what we're striving to achieve here. I really enjoy my job working with physicists and technicians and designers to take people's ideas and actually make them a reality. For me, I just enjoy doing the research, I enjoy doing the physics. It's kind of Tony Stark in a way, and it just happens to be contributing to something that I think is a big issue that humanity has to face. I hope you enjoy what you've seen in this Meeting Minds video. And just to preface the future, we're about to uh, announce a site to build the world's first fusion power plant that will plug into the grid here in the UK. And we're developing a fantastic new team of professors here at Oxford University to collaborate and co-locate with the team in Cullum at the Atomic Energy Authority to win the race to put fusion into practice. And so please keep an eye on what we're doing and, and come back and see in future. Thank you.